Okay. I hopefully I fixed the mic. I tried new settings. No. Hopefully it's gonna work this time. And it sound the uh, everything sounds good. Okay, so from where we left off last time. We were talking about uh some variables. Public and private variables. Okay. Well all we know about private variables or functions I make this one a uh, public because I want to have a variable that's public. Okay, all we know about private variables or private functions is that we cannot use the dot operator on a private variable or a private function here. So let's try the let's try changing the width. Can't do that. We can't even print it out to the screen because we're using the dot operator on a private variable. We will not be allowed to compile this. The compiler will stop us from it compiling at all on private variables. It was designed to do that on purpose. So, okay, but we can use, we can change public variables. We can print out those, like a label. That is now a public variable because I moved it to the public section of the struct. Okay, but going back, I want to, I cannot print out the height, but now I can because I am using a public function. Get height is a public function and all it does is just return the height. It doesn't change it, it just prints it, it just lets us know what it is. So the, with all the functions, with all the functions that I have so far, the only one I can view is height. I cannot print width or length with the available functions that I have. The only thing I can do is change them. I can I can just look at it. I can just look at the height, but I cannot do anything with the width or length yet until I make a public function, functions or a variable that changes things like that. Okay. Next, I want to talk about. Here, I'm going to change this function here to um, increment with a capital I. I like to make my functions start off with capital letters so I know that I made them myself. So if they start off with a capital letter, I'll know they're, uh, they were custom made. Just my preference, but okay. Alright, um, next. I want to call that function a dot. Now notice this, when you start typing in after a dot, this little box comes up. Now you might have already figured this out, but these blue boxes represent variables. The, the purple boxes represent functions. And notice, see the ones with the locks on it, the blue boxes with the locks, those represent private variables. We don't have any private functions on this one here, but it would look the same. There would be a little lock if there was a private function here. So I'm going to double click here. I'm going to give a left parenthesis and then type in 4. And as you saw the function here, it's going to increment the height by 4. So I can say OK. Now I want to output a new line. And I want to output the get height. Okay, let's see what it looks like. It should say 3, then 7. And it does. So this function changes the height of that variable. Okay, so that's what this function does here. So I don't have too much else to say about public and private variables, except that private, you cannot use the dot operator. Now, why would you you're, you're probably wondering, since this is their first time seeing this, why would you ever want to make your variables public or private? Notice that we have almost no we have no control over the private variables, and we only have limited control over the height. We can't just say height equals this or that. We have to use the increment or decrement options to get that. Now, um, some variables 
yeah, there's just very limited control. Now, why would you ever want to do that? Well, it's a similar reason why you wouldn't want to make variables global. You know, if you start making, if you write all your code in the main function, and you decide to make a change to your program to make it just a little bit better, or fix a glitch, or make it a little bit smaller, you're going to have a heck of a time uh, finding your errors. Because if you have to make a minor change, you might have to change your entire code if it's all in the main function. The same thing, and depending on a global variable, you might have functions that are using this global variable, and if, if it, something changes it somewhere, and a function dependent on that having a certain value, your whole program will be doomed. That's why we try to keep our variables as local as possible. Try to keep them in smaller scopes if we can. We haven't talked about an object-oriented approach yet, but I still want to teach you a couple other things before we go over an object-oriented approach. Basically, sum that up, an object-oriented approach, people call it OOP, is it's a strategy to keep your code flexible and easy. And simple, so if you have to make a change, there won't be a, you won't have to screw up your whole program making a minor change. That's why we try to, I'm trying to encourage you, well, I haven't, actually I haven't been yet. I encourage you to start using functions and then try to keep your main function small just depending on, just try to use a lot of functions that you made yourself. So if there's a glitch in one of your functions, all you have to do is just say, oh, I gotta change the code in this function here. Instead of changing your entire loop, you might have a huge while loop or for loop, and you're going to try to change all the criteria. You're going to have 20 different uh, nested for loops or if statements when you can just be using functions. But we'll go over that later. So private variables, you cannot use the dot operator. And the uh, an advantage of a private variable is to restrict yourself. Now, uh, I understand that it won't make any sense to you at all. It may not to use a public or to make your variables private. So I didn't either. I made my variables public until I figured out why it would be necessary to make them private because I thought that was stupid at first and I figured it out until I actually seen why it was helpful. So that's all I got to say. This is the end of the video. Private variables, you cannot use the dot operator. Now we're going to be talking about classes and structs and the difference between them.